Good afternoon. My name is Joel Luis Carbonera and I am a PhD candidate at the Federal University of Rio Grande do Sul in Brazil. And today I'm going to present a density-based approach for instance selection. And firstly, I'm going to present a brief introduction about what is uh, instance selection. So, in the context of machine learning and data mining, instance selection is a task that consists of choosing a subset of the total available data to achieve the original purpose of the application as if the whole data had been used. Notice that, in general, every approach of instance selection should face a trade-off between the reduction rate of the dataset and the classification quality. That is, the challenge in this task is to achieve the high classification accuracy and high reduction rates. So, why do we need instance selection approaches? Firstly, instance selection can be used for reducing the data to a manageable subset. And this can reduce the computational resources that are necessary for performing the data mining process. Second, these approaches can be used to remove redundant, erroneous, or noisy instances before applying the data mining algorithms. And this can increase the classification accuracy. Regarding the approaches available in the literature, most of them are designed for preserving the boundaries between different classes in the dataset. So, these approaches are focused on preserving the border instances, which represent the information that is relevant for supporting discrimination between classes. In this picture, for example, we can see a representation of the process of selecting the border instances. At the left, we can see a complete data set with two distinct classes, in this case represented by blue balls and green balls, and at the right, we can see the resulting dataset produced by an approach that preserves the boundaries. Notice that the approach selects only the border instance. However, identifying the boundaries implies in high time complexity because it is necessary to compare each pair of instances in the dataset. And due to this, the time increases quadratically with the number of instances in the whole dataset. And this is an undesirable property for algorithms that should deal with large datasets. Considering this, we proposed the LDIS algorithm. LDIS means Local Density Based Instance Selection. This algorithm analyzes the instances of each class separately and preserves only the densest instances in a given neighborhood. In general, it has a lower time complexity and a higher balance between reduction and accuracy than the algorithms that preserve the border instances. Now, I'm going to present our approach. The main intuition underlying our approach is that instances that have a high concentration of other instances of the same class near to them represent more information about the surroundings than other instances. And, according to our strategy, these are the instances that should be preserved in the instance selection task. So, for identifying the representative instances, in our approach we adopt the notion of local density, which can be measured using the function dense. This function provides the local density of the instance X relatively to the set P, which is a subset of the whole dataset. According to this function, the local density of the instance x is basically the opposite of the average of the distance between x and each instance y that belongs to the set P. Notice that the distance function d can be selected according to the requirements of the task. Another notion that is important for our approach is the notion of partial k neighborhood. The partial k neighborhood of a given instance x is the set of the k nearest neighbors of x with the same class label of x. In our approach, the partial k neighborhood of x is provided by the function pkn. In this example, we can see the partial tree neighborhood of the instance a. 
The resulting set in this case is B, C and D. Notice that although the instance J is closer to A than the instance D, it is not included in partial tree neighborhood of A because it belongs to a different class. Considering this, now we can discuss the LDIS strategy. Basically, for each distinct class label L in the dataset, for each instance that belongs to the class L, the algorithm verifies if there is some instance Y within the partial K neighborhood of X, whose local density, considering the set of instances of the class L, is greater than the local density of X. If this is not the case, X is the locally densest instance in its partial K neighborhood, and due to this, X should be preserved in the final dataset. This very simple algorithm formalizes the LDIS strategy. The algorithm takes as input a set of instances T and a given value K, which represents the number of neighbors, and produces a set S, which is a subset of T. Notice that LDIS adopts a local search strategy where the instances are selected within each class. And due to this, it is not necessary to compare each pair of instances in the whole dataset. So, the time complexity of LDIS is proportional to the sum of the squares of the cardinalities of the classes of the dataset. When there are more than one class, this is better than the square of the cardinality of the whole dataset. Okay, uh, now I'm going to discuss our experiments. In our experiments, we compared the performance of LDIS with the performances of five well-known instance selection algorithms available in the literature. The drop tree algorithm, the ENN, ICF, LSBO, and LSSM. In these experiments, we considered 15 well-known datasets available in the UCI machine learning repository. In this table, we can see a brief description of each dataset. We compared three different performance measures. The accuracy, which represents the radio between the number of instances correctly classified and the number of instances that were tested. The reduction rate, which is the ratio of the difference between the cardinality of T and the cardinality of S, divided by the cardinality of T, where T represents the whole dataset and S represents the subset of T that was selected by some instance selection algorithm. And finally, the effectiveness measures the degree to which the, an instance selection algorithm is successful in producing a small set of instances that allows a high classification accuracy of new instance. Notice that it's basically given by the accuracy multiplied by the reduction rate. And also, in our experiments, the classification accuracy was evaluated using the KNN algorithm, adopting K uh, equal three. And the three measures were evaluated in an n-fold cross-validation scheme, where n was set to 10. Regarding the cross-validation scheme, firstly, the data set is randomly partitioned in 10 equal-sized subsamples. One of these subsamples is retained as test data, and the union of the remaining nine subsamples is considered the initial training set. An instance selection algorithm is applied for reducing the initial training set, producing the reduced training set. The reduction of the data set can be measured at this point. Then, the reduced training set is used as a training set for the KNN algorithm for evaluating the instance in test, 
At this point, we can measure the accuracy achieved by the KNN. This process is repeated 10 times with each subsample used once as test. Then, the 10 values of accuracy and reduction are averaged to produce respectively the average accuracy and the average reduction. And finally, the average effectiveness is calculated by considering the average accuracy and average reduction. This chart represents the variation of accuracy of each algorithm in each dataset. We can see that LSSM achieves the highest accuracy in most of the datasets. However, it is important to notice that LSSM was designed only for removing noisy instances, and due to this, it does not provide high reduction rates. We can see also that LDIS achieves an accuracy that is higher than the average for several datasets. For three datasets, LDIS achieves the higher accuracy. Notice also that the difference between the average accuracy of LDIS and LSSM is not so large. In this way, this difference can be compensated by the gain in reduction and in runtime provided by LDIS. This chart represents the variation of reduction rate of each algorithm in each dataset. We can see that LDIS achieves the highest reduction in most of the datasets. It also achieves the highest average reduction rate. This chart represents the variation of effectiveness of each algorithm in each dataset. We can see that LDIS achieves the highest effectiveness in most of the datasets. It also achieves the highest average effectiveness. We also compared the runtimes of the six algorithms. And in our experiments, these algorithms were applied for reducing the three largest datasets considered in our experiments. Ladder, splice junction gene sequences, and mushroom. We compared the resulting runtimes in milliseconds. This chart represents the runtimes of the six algorithms considering the ladder dataset. We can see that LDIS has the lowest runtime among the considered algorithms. And notice that there is a significant difference between the runtime of LDIS and LSSM, which is the second faster algorithm in this dataset. This chart represents the results for the splice junction gene sequences dataset. And in this case, again, LDIS algorithm has the lowest runtime among the considered algorithms. Finally, this chart represents the results for the mushroom dataset. In this case, again, LDIS has the lowest runtime among the considered algorithms. We also evaluated the effects of the parameter K in the performance of LDIS. We compared the accuracy, the reduction rate, and the effectiveness of LDIS considering the 15 previous discussed dataset. And in this ex experiment, we considered six values of K, 1, 2, 3, 5, 10, and 20. This chart represents how the parameter K affects the accuracy. And we can see that as the value of K increases, the accuracy decreases. This chart represents the effects of the parameter K in the reduction rate of LDIS. And in this case, we can see that as the value of K increases, the reduction rate increases as well.
However, regarding the effectiveness, we can see that as the value of k increases, the effectiveness increases up to a point from which it begins to decrease. Now I'm going to present our main conclusions. So according to the results of our experiments, we can conclude that LDIS provides the best reduction rates and the best balance between accuracy and reduction, with the lower time complexity when compared with other algorithms available in the literature. Also, the accuracy achieved by LDIS is comparable to the accuracy achieved by other state-of-the-art algorithms. As a future work, we plan to investigate strategies for automatically estimating the best value of the parameter k for each problem. We also consider the hypothesis that the best value of k can be different for different classes within the same dataset. We also plan to investigate a version of LDIS that abstracts the information of the neighbor instances within the partial k neighborhood of a dense instance, instead of just eliminating the instances that are less dense. Also, we plan to investigate how LDIS can be combined with other instance selection algorithms available in the literature. And finally, the performance of LDIS encourages the investigation of novel instance selection strategies that are based on other local properties of the dataset. The source code of the LDIS algorithm is available in this link and if you have any question or comment, please email us at the address in this slide. Thank you.